Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. We got Brian's 33 hot rod here. We're about to do some surgery of the major kind. That's right, cosmetic surgery on the 33 Ford two-door sedan. We're gonna take about two and a half out of the front, one and a half out of the back, a little bit of an angle chop. We've got a whole episode dedicated to nothing but chopping the top on this baby. All right, so you ready, man? You've been waiting for this for a long time. It's a big move. Got the surgeon hands ready. Let's get it going. <laughs> well, it's a good thing to wait a little bit, get your planning, get your strategy down, do a lot of your homework, you know, because otherwise you can take a perfectly good car and ruin it. Huh? First thing you want to do is make sure the body is lined up, get some good cross measurements, make sure that it's braced well, and that way you know once you start cutting, everything's gonna be happy. Because once you cut that top, a lot of that structure is gonna be gone. This thing can just fold in on itself. You'll almost impossible to get them to come back out, or at least it's a lot of work. Yeah, if you find some spots that are out of whack, like on this car, it had some damage on one side. We ended up putting a porta power in, go across a corner, and it'll, you can bring it out, and you'll find that by doing your cross measuring. Now we're gonna end up on this, we're gonna put a full cage in it, but we can't put the cage in until the top's down. So today, Get her down, get it tacked in, and we'll have a nice whoo, aerodynamic look. Yeah, no, you can tell you've got a slant on the front and a slant on the back. So if I take a section out and I drop it, this point here is going to drop straight down. These aren't going to line up. So it's not as easy as just cutting a <laughs> section out. Right. There's a lot of work involved. Yeah, and the way we start, we decided to do it, and you plan all this out on paper. First thing we do is we're going to remove the rear window. Now by doing that, we're going to lower it. We're going to keep it a stock size. That way we've got some viewing outside of the back. Yeah, because these start out taller, so when they shrink down it's not so bad, but that rear window is smaller. So if you cut it out, you can keep that same size and at least be able to see something. Yep, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take A, B, C pillar, we're gonna start at the C pillar. We lower it down and we're gonna kinda line up this area where the bead is. Now once this comes down, unfortunately, the B pillar is gonna be out of whack. Now what do we do? We're gonna cut this part out move it back into location. Now if the B pillar's in, guess what? The A pillar doesn't line up anymore. So what we're gonna do there, we're gonna lean it back to match. That way we don't have to cut all the center of the roof area with a lot better look and a lot better aerodynamics. Yeah, now any big project's gonna start with a blueprint, or in this case, a photocopy. So we took the rendering and we blew it up to full scale. That way, we'll know exactly what size the window needs to be now, if this was a straight chop, wouldn't be that big a deal. But when you do an angle chop, it becomes a whole nother animal. Yeah, now everything up here is gonna disappear and it's gonna come down to about right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make us a template. So I'm gonna cut out this window into paper. I'm gonna make one out of steel. So we can put it in here as we make the chop. That window will set exactly like we've scaled on the paper. We'll know how to bring this down, make sure the body ends up looking just like it does in the rendering. Yep, so let's get that done. You cut that, I'll cut the rear window out. We'll be on. It's about to happen. Yeah. Got a rear window out. Now we're trying to lay out the cut through the C-pillar. Now you want to miss this radius and miss this radius and try to get the flattest area you have because that's going to be the easiest place to chop it. Once we take this little three-quarter line down, we need to do a kick up, get this cut, drop it down. We'll kind of slide it inside of the body and then line up to Bird's pattern that he's making. And then we'll be able to figure out how to move forward. All right, I'm making my window templates, making them out of paper. And you can see this is where the roof's going to come down. So it's going to chop and angle real nice. Now. Take my paper, transfer that over to my metal, and uh, now i got a pattern. Once I've chopped off all the big bulky stuff on the kick shear, I can come over here to the hand shear and make easy work of all the nice curves. So I'm making windows, but these are the kind you can't see out of. Chop. Now we're laying out our cuts. We're here at the front at the A-pillar. Now this roof right at this point is going to drop about two and a half inches. Now in order for that to happen, we're going to have to lean this over and it's only going to take an inch and a half out of the front in order to make that happen. 
So because this leans, you end up with more distance than the actual drop of this two and a half at that point. So we know there, now we go to the B pillar, we're gonna take two inches out of the center. That's what we've calculated between two and a half, two, and one and a half in the back. In order to do that, I've sheared a little piece of sheet metal, you put this on, scribe it around, gives you a real nice accurate way to roll it all the way around and make sure you got it really tight gaps. If you can get the tight gap, you're really going to make your welding easier. It's going to make your distortion less. It's going to make you look like you know what you're doing. Now moving to the back, <clears throat> we've decided that in the rear we believe it's going to be an inch and a half. Now that was after our, you know, kind of going off paper. Now you put this up here, inch and a half is starting to look a little bit suspect. So we're going to start a little bit shorter, maybe an inch and a quarter or so. That's why we made this pattern, because as this roof leans, it's not a straight drop chop. This is a leaning chop, so we're going to get less. So what we'll do, get this trim, kind of sneak up on it in the rear, and lean it down and see where it lines up. Once it gets to this point, you know, then we'll know we're right on the money. So take a little break. We'll get back. Go ahead and start cutting. I'd like to keep my car's finish looking good and protect the paint, but I don't have time to wax it every month. Is there a longer lasting solution? 3M has virtually eliminated the need for the monthly wax with its innovative 3M performance finish, a durable, long lasting, easy to use synthetic wax. The durability of performance finish from 3M has been tested to withstand up to 50 car washes and the harshest of elements for at least six months before it needs to be reapplied. Just apply a very thin amount by hand with a terry cloth wax applicator or a clean soft towel, or apply by machine. With 3M Performance Finish Synthetic Wax, there is no need to wait for hazing or the hassles of white residue. Simply wipe off and buff to a high gloss using the 3M Microfiber Detail Cloth. This tip is brought to you by 3M Car Care, performance-driven solutions. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by iBreakParts.com. For all of your braking needs, look to iBreakParts.com, your online stopping destination. All right, it's go time. We've measured eight times. We're hopefully only going to cut three. <laughs> I got arrows on my lines. That way, you know, bird back there doesn't cut on the wrong side of the so tape. So I'm cutting on the top side of it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, you know, we've prayed to the deities. And so we're going to get the top loose. We're gonna get it down, we'll get the doors out of the way, and uh, then it's gonna be time to start laying this baby out. So, you think we got it? Go. Here we go. <laughs> All right, we got that out. Now we've got the door loose. We just get the doors out of the way. they will be a non-issue. Make the top fit just like we want. We'll come back and we'll add the doors later. All right, I'm loose. All right, this is a good point to bring in a couple of friends because, you know, dropping the top with two guys is going to be a little bit tricky. OK, I'll hold yours up. All right, one last cut here. It's a pillar. <laughs> Everybody off? Woohoo! All right. Now, what we need to do is drop it inside. Set that down. Ooh. 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 All right. Chop dance. That's the chop, chop dance. dance. That's right. the chop dance. We got to take a break. After the chop dance, <laughs> we'll be back to finish her up. This tip is brought to you by AutoGeek.net. We are car care. Do you remember how beautiful your car was when you first bought it? And now, when you look at the paint in the sun, it's filled with swirls. Modern clear coats tend to be harder than traditional single stage paints. And what that means to you and me is when we go out into the garage and try to remove the swirls, it's really difficult to do by hand. And that's why machine polishing has become so popular in the last 15 to 20 years. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the Porter Cable 7424 XP and how easy it is to use this tool to remove swirls out of a clear coat finish. The biggest concern when machine cleaning or machine polishing is the worry about burning through the clear coat or instilling swirls into the paint. 
And with this type of tool, it's virtually impossible. And that's because inside the housing here, there's a clutch unit. And if you push down too hard, what will happen is the foam pad will quit rotating. And for the most part, it'll just kind of vibrate against the paint. And that's why it won't hurt anything. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how safe this is by turning the tool on and pressing it against my hand and show you what happens. It didn't hurt my hand, it's not gonna hurt your pain. Let me show you just how effective this tool is on clear coat paints by taking and putting it on a tape line right here and then taking the Porter Cable 7424 XP, I'm gonna use some Wolfgang Total Swirl Remover, this Lake Country foam cutting pad, and I'm gonna buff just on just one side, and then we'll pull the tape off and compare the difference between before and after. Whenever you're using a power tool like this, first apply the product to the face of the pad, then before you turn the polisher on, place the face of the pad against the paint. Otherwise, you could throw splatter all over the place. After you turn the polisher on, you wanna quickly spread the product out over the area you're gonna work, and then you want to actually slow the polisher down. We call this your arm movement. Slow your arm movement down and begin to work the polisher in a crisscross pattern and this will ensure uniform material removal. And then before you lift the pad off, turn the machine off so the pad stops rotating. Over here we have a swirled out finish just like we started. Over here we have a swirl free finish just like a brand new car. For more information on this and more detailing tips and techniques, check out autogeek.net and click on Show Car Garage. Okay, got our top down, and you can see we got a little bit of alignment problemas. So we're gonna do what's called a relief cut. <laughs> cut it through here, cut it through here, cut it down there, cut it down there. That'll allow us to move that A pillar around just like Bird's already got on his side. Yeah, so this one's been relieved. You can see this one lines up a little bit better. And you know, it's butted here, but we still have a gap, so now that we're going to align these, both front, left, and right, we're going to start sectioning out a little bit more. This is going to drop. That's going to close in, and bam, it's going to be right where we wanted it. Bam! Bam! Woohoo! All right, you can see by the gap it's closed. We've actually trimmed that A-pillar down, dropped the roof down, boom, we're right where we want. We've got all our lines to match. We can kind of put our windows in, see how we're doing. Now you can see we're not aligned here because we shoved the top back relative to the body. So what we're gonna do, cut this piece out. We can slide it over. We'll put a filler piece in here. Now the window starts to look pretty good. The B-pillar is starting to look pretty good. We can work on that A-pillar. So let me get this piece cut out. Chop. Now with our little guide here, we can start to slide this guy here, clamp it, tweak it in a little bit, make our filler piece, good to go. All right, Bird, got that tacked in, that looks All good. All right, look at that. Yeah, cool. Now he's got that in, so what we were able to do is actually take a section from what we cut out here, and you can see we've got a little gap piece, we need to make a filler. So we could use that same kind of shape and rework it around a little bit, and voila, we can kind of hold that in there, make sure we got our little inside bend here lined up, and Ready? scribe away. Now you want to overlap and scribe. It's always the way to do it. And then you'll have a nice, clean scribe, cut right to that line, butt welded in. So we'll start cutting, and we'll be done with that piece and ready to move on. Voila. Got the A-pillar tacked. And you can see what we did, we took a little three-quarter tube, using that to simulate our windshield. We went back in, double-checked our heights on both sides. That's looking really sharp. Now you can see we've got damage in here, obviously, from all our pie cuts. We're leaving, moving these around. That's not a big deal. All we gotta do is come back in with some patches, put them in there and there. Same thing here. You could weld it if you wanted, but we'll probably go back in with patches at some point. 
But you know, it's like anything else. It's really easy, you know, it's fairly quick, as you can see, to get a roof tacked in. And you've got hundreds of hours to finish it and make it perfect, which obviously we don't have time for. Speaking of time, gotta take a break. We'll be back. Hey, welcome back to our parts room. We got some great product in here today. All right, first thing we got up from Stage 8 Locking Fasteners. Now, these are valve cover bolts. There's no bigger bummer than having your valve covers leaking oil all over your headers, all over your engine, all over your engine compartment. You know, and the deal is you go and you crank those bolts down. It's just a gasket, a cork gasket a lot of times on the old cars. They don't have enough fasteners, so you end up cranking them down in the center. You squeeze that gasket out. These guys, you can go in with the right torque. You can set that clamp load and then you can lock it down so it stays good forever. Yep, these are grade eight. They have rolled threads, made in USA. They have a duplex nickel coating, so they look yeah. cool, nice and shiny. Put the torque spec on. It's gonna lock down, mechanically lock. And uh, if you go to their website, they've got all kind of complete applications no matter what you have. Yeah, don't forget they can do custom stuff. They can do lightweight materials, real high strength for whatever application, racing you've got. So check them out. Stage eight locking fasteners. All right, next up is from Strut Masters. Now this is from 95 to 01 Lincoln Continental. Yeah, now you know, you bought your Lincoln, you've been cruising around like, yeah, the ride's great. You know, all of a sudden, boop, those potholes just kind of hit a lot harder than they used to. You know, you're getting the droops in the different corners, you know. So. Now, after about five to eight years, these airbags, the rubber, you know, wants to deteriorate and they start to leak. Yeah. And what these are, they're a really easy kit. You just replace your air suspension on these air suspension vehicles. They come with instructions and they're much more inexpensive than if you go back with a factory air suspension yes. kit. This is a lifetime warranty on there and they're meant to be designed for what the, you know, the factory had there originally. So you're gonna be happy cruising down the road again. It's from Strut Masters. All right, next thing we got is from American Auto Wire. And what this kit is, this is for the 64 to 66 Mustang, which is one of our favorites, of course. Yeah, this is a complete classic kit. So it's got everything that your car came with, all your switches from your ignition switch, your headlight switch, your dimmer, I mean, high quality switches, and the connector pre-crimped from the factory, ready to plug into all of those Yeah, guys. right in down to the nice molded tail light rubbers. I mean, it's a really yeah. nice kit that looks very factory, and uh, anybody can do it at home because it comes as is, two length with the connectors. Really cool yeah. piece from American Auto Wire. All right, next product we got up is from Rizlone. This is their engine treatment. Yeah, it's a high quality penetrating oil. It goes in with your existing oil, you know, and it helps to break down, you know, the sludges and the varnishes, you know, and piston rings and valve seats. Kind of lift those areas up slowly, you know, if you kind of keep using it over time, it'll lift it up, suspend it in the oil and let it get sucked out into the filter. It's easy to put in. Just put it right in with your engine oil. It'll help quiet those valves. Yeah, a good way to kind of keep your engine running longer, keep your older engines start working a little bit cleaner than they used to. Engine treatment from Rizlone. All right, we're out of time. You gotta get back to work. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. How are you shaping up back there? Oh, it's looking pretty good. We've got our seam back the way we want it. Cool. Anna, welcome back. You can see we've got our doors on, but they're not just gonna fit right away because we've changed this around. <laughs> not gonna fit right away, imagine that. Now, we're doing our relief cuts in the front. You kind of hold it up. You can see that angle is still a little bit forward. You take a dead blow, give it a little bit of a boop, boop. Now, see that angle's starting to come in pretty good. Now, I can go ahead and start by fitting this back in. And we're pretty close, but I might want to go ahead and trim a little bit more, start to bring this down. And then this has got to really start working its way towards the A pillar. Yep. What we'll want to do is cut it in the same location as the other one. So I'm gonna make bird a mark right there. Since it's loose, you can actually probably get it in the bandsaw. Makes these cuts go pretty easy. Yeah, throw a little less metal around the shop. And while yeah. I get this cutting, I'll show you what we've been doing in the back. Now you can see we've got the window, the whole frame, clicoed in. You know, temporary fastener, hold everything in place. And we've got a couple options. We can go ahead and butt weld everything because it's pretty close here. Metal finish it off, leave it as it is. Or Brian can go ahead and step flange it like he did on the lower skirt, 
you know, knowing Brian, he might go in here and rivet the whole car together. He's a crazy kind of guy like that. Now, we put the window in, we've got to make sure that it's level and centered. So we've got a center line, we can drop a string down. We know the frame rails are square because we built it off the jig. We can take a measurement off each, each side, make sure it's centered nice. And we can go ahead and drop some measurements from here down. And we can side it off, we look all the way through the car, side it off the dash. Everything looks good, it's all square together. Now, this lower skirt, it's been raised about two inches, but it looks very, very factory. The frame rails have been extended from the last time you've seen it, so these look real original. A lot of good work on here, but let me get on that window frame. What do you think, Bird? Your first time to cut a top. I actually had a good time. Now, all that work, we threw a lot of metal around the shop today, was worth it, because look what we got. Nice, new, mm -hmm. sexy lines. Mm -hmm. It looks faster, we haven't put the engine in yet. That's right, and like you said, you know, you start with a good rendering, and it's a good blueprint. So, these were off our original, and that way we know, we, we start with that, we're gonna get exactly the profile we want, the car is gonna, in person, look just like the drawing, which is exactly what you want. Yeah, we had a great roadmap, it kept us out of trouble, didn't mess anything up too bad that we couldn't go back and fix, so. Now a lot of people ask us, how do we keep these things in bare metal? And what we use is phosphoric acid or metal prep, put it on a Scotch-Brite with some gloves, because it is an acid, clean it down, that'll get it nice and clean. Yeah, and once it's clean, a little automatic transmission fluid, wipe down over the top, it'll keep it from rusting, make it look good for a long time. And if you be sure and go ahead and take it to the next level, get that black magic tire wet, Oh, watch out! Hmm? <laughs> and get the tires nice and clean. People come by the shop, they'll know you mean business. Yeah, Brian's that. such a goofball, he can't even wait for it to get out of paint to spiff it up a little bit. That's right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show today. We'll see you next time on Two Guys Garage. See you next week. Hey, watch it. Watch it.